The other thing that you talk about is is this sort of not to do list, and I sort of always joking is like when <laughs> when I was just overwhelmed, I thought I'm going to create a to don't list. Uh, as I begin to realize that my most precious uh, commodity is time, you know what we're choosing, and I think I'm imagining that your not to do list is 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 really about that. And I'd love to hear what your not to do <laughs> list is too. Yeah, let's let's do it. And so for me, on my to stop list or to do less of is like checking my phone first thing in the morning. I time, right? <laughs> right, I don't, don't keep I don't it in your bedroom. It. How about that? Yes. Then even better, right? Cause that would, that would stop that. Um, that would stop that right up front. That would be a, a lead domino. And I'm always focused on, you know, everybody has, that's the, you're true. You're right. That's the one thing that we can't get back is our time. And we all have, that's the one thing that's equal. Not everybody has equal income or education or a Rolodex, but everybody has the same 24 hours in a day. And it's how we're utilizing that time. And so I would say is on my, on my not to do list, <laughs> let's go. I would say let's first, not touch our phone first thing in the morning and then late at night. That, that's in, that's kind of a simple, not necessarily easy, but a simple one. Um, for me, the device also is just create so much stress. So I'm, it's not that I'm so enlightened or have such amazing willpower and discipline. It's just something that I've just associated. Like it's, it's wonderful to use it to connect and to learn, but it's also, um, you know, can really hurt your peace of mind. And, and peace of mind is high currency. It's true. I remember like recently I forgot my phone and I was like, went out for the evening and I was like, wow. I feel so yeah. free and like and, I, and I actually first, had a flashback to what it was like before there were cell phones or, or even <laughs> even even having not having the phone at, at at tables like we've done a we have our own podcast and you've been on a number of times and just we know that the stress that's caused the anxiety the impetus having the phone on the dinner table makes you want to check it right and it's just it it starts like every every x amount of seconds you have that impulse to do it even if you don't touch your phone and so i feel like especially because you know, dinners and meals with family members or friends is kind of a lost, yeah, it's very precious. And then, you know, it's, it's kind of a lost uh, time that we're spending less and less time doing that. I think, you know, it allows us higher quality of life and enjoyment, help us live longer also, because it's not just what we eat, it's who we're eating with and how we're eating and when we're eating, right? And why we're eating that stuff to begin with. So many people eat in a stressed state, they're like still working or something, and they never get that parasympathetic rest and digest. So even things on my not to do list is when I'm eating something, I don't, I don't work, right? I just, I, it's an, it, m- m- Meditation is not limited. To be mindful is not to limit your meditation time. It, you could take mindfulness into brushing your teeth, right? Into into eating a meal, and really tasting what you're what you're eating and connecting, using that opportunity to connect with other people. So um, yeah, so I don't I don't work like for example, my not to do is I don't work in bed. Something simple. Because we also, part of our learning journey is when we're, we associate unconsciously the environment to the state that we're in. And if, if you tend to work in sitting in your bed or on your phone, then that's the place where you should be like, you know, doing only a couple activities, right? And one of them is sleep. And, you know, you don't want to, it's hard sometimes for people to turn it off if they're conditioned every single time. Even having a device, let's say they binge watch, they use their device, their laptop for work, but if they're also using it to binge watch Netflix, you're, you're training your nervous system like, hey, these are two different activities, two different states that you're, you're anchoring to it. So I would think that not working in bed or not working when you're, um, when, when you're eating is, it could be very important. And even so, things like So it sounds like very zen. When you eat, eat. When you sleep, sleep. When you walk, walk. When you breathe, breathe. It's like, <laughs> it's, it's, very, it's so very, profound. Like, but it, basically, the Buddha taught this a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I take absolutely no credit for this. I definitely didn't, didn't, didn't initiate this. But it's it's something, it's sometimes also a coach reminds you of what you're doing when you're doing it well. And sometimes it's hard because we're addicted to, you know, to work or we're addicted to social media or something like that. I would also say even simple, simple things like, I would say on the top of the list also is not complaining, not caring what other people think. And I know it's easier said than done, but if you feel your life with the opinions of those around you, both positive and negative, you're going to run out of gas, right? Nobody has a right to define who you are. The only opinion that matters about you and your dream is yours. And we do ourselves a disservice when we let the noise of other people's opinions distort, you know, our reality and subvert our own thoughts and values. Um, I think also on our list not to do, and this is again, easier said than done because so many people are addicted to it. And I know I've, I've been in these places is complaining. We're talking about That's mental health. That's a good right? one. Mental health. 
um, you, you can't make excuses. You can make excuses or you can make progress, right? But you can't make both. And complaining wastes valuable time, energy, and achieves nothing, right? And, and so I would say you can't be upset by the results you didn't get from the work you didn't do. So I would just say that nothing, nothing happens after complaining. You mean? <laughs> yeah, after complaining, yeah, I mean, no I... complaining, no overthinking. Also, because I think thinking is good, but overthinking and wanting everything to be perfect can end things. You know, before they even have a chance yeah, to well, develop. Well, it's true. I think you know we can go through wor the world with looking at what's right or looking at what's wrong. And I think some of what's wrong with the world now is we're over focused on looking at what's wrong instead of what's right. And there's so much beauty and magic. I just came back from Africa, like I mentioned, and I you know went to the most horrific slum it was the biggest slum in africa you know, children living you know, literally next to six foot piles of garbage and sewage outside their little tin shack door no sanitation no running water or, you know living on three dollars a day and you know easy to kind of look what's wrong with that and then in that there was this beautiful light of this, this little school that was formed by a friend of mine called little lions and how he really helped these kids emerge from the slums and become something and and give them food and nutrition and how he he cut these guys who were, you know, basically criminals in the, in the neighborhood and got them cleaning up the garbage and paying them and, and getting rid of all the, and now they're like just really quite amazing. So there's like, there's so much to look at what's right. And, uh, and I had a, had a business coach once who was talking to me about a, an employee of mine who was always complaining about everything. And, and, uh, he said, you know, some people are just make wrong machines. And I was like, wow, that is a great phrase, you know, and I think, I really pay attention to my own inner narrative about looking at what's right or wrong. And it can really color your whole life. And the good news from a scientific perspective as a doctor and some of them now focused on longevity is that optimists live longer, even if they're wrong. <laughs> so, right, yeah. <laughs> Very true. And yeah. they, I think they, they enjoy the process a little bit more also. And, and we're willing to take risks where a pessimist is going to be right more often because they're not going to do much because they're getting out of that. And I, I think another that, that thing to stop besides complaining and overthinking and caring what other people think is judgment, especially for ourselves, self-judgment. Like people think that if they're hard on themselves because they didn't, I don't know, exercise that day or eat properly that day that they're more likely to follow through. But studies done on self-compassion show that when you're actually kind to yourself, and you say, hey, I'm human. I had a long, I had a kind of a, you know, hard day. You're more likely to follow through. So I think self-judgment, meaning we should lighten up a little bit. It's not about being perfect. It's about personal progress. So we can release self-judgment. I'm not saying, again, it's easy, but those moments when you start criticizing yourself, you could take a pause and a breath and just observe yourself instead right it's because hard it's hard to tame your inner <laughs> yeah it, it, no, but no it's doubt. possible it's definitely possible but they, yeah it's, it's, because the 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 former leads to self-doubt, but the latter leads to self-awareness and self-improvement so you know we could be so you know more and i would say uh, i say this busy because i think that's something else we should stop being but we should we should be so busy growing ourselves you know that we have no time for that self-judgment and in those moments we start judging ourselves we just get curious and we replace judgment with curiosity so overthinking comparison I would, yeah compare stop comparing ourselves because another if you're not a fifth digital like horse villain like uh, i would say it's it's digital depression Right. Don't compare yourself to anyone but your best self. It's not about being perfect. It's about the consistent action every day that leads to small incremental improvements that little by little, little becomes a lot. But when we compare ourselves to the highlight trail of everybody on social media, you know, it can make us feel like we're not enough. And there's a lot of artificial turf, like it's greener where we, the grass is greener where we, where we water it. Right. But it's tends to look greener online because of the filter people use. Yeah. The, there's a lot of artificial, <laughs> there's a lot of artificial turf online. Yeah. Um, so I would say, yeah. yeah. And then if people are going through a hard time right now, I just want to remind people that there are some things we can only learn in a storm. Right. And we have to can just control the controllables. We focus on what we could do and we know that the, 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 the clouds will eventually part and the sun will shine. Because, and then not all storms come to disrupt your life. Some storms, storms come to, to clear a path. So that, those are some of the things I might not to do. That's so um, great. That's great. It's a great list. A great list to start. I encourage everybody to think about what is there to don't list. <laughs> start don't to list. write that down. That. That's on your <laughs> list.